Today's episode of How Did Jason Do That is brought to you by Tanakra, Bellcat, Realms, Power Automate, Microsoft Excel, and Microsoft Outlook. Hello and welcome to How Did Jason Do That? Today I'll be showing you how to use Power Automate to perform an email merge using data from an Excel file then automatically sending out emails using the Outlook Connector. To do this yourself, you will need a Microsoft 365 tenant with access to Power Automate, Excel, and Outlook. If you don't already have an M365 license, head over to Microsoft 365 right now and get yourself one. Before we get started today though, don't forget to hit subscribe, click the bell icon so you can get notified when another one of my videos becomes available, and please leave your comments below. Let's get started. To start off today's lesson, we are going to open a SharePoint site. In this case, just a basic out of the box team site. I'm gonna to go to site contents and I'm gonna create a new Excel file within my documents library. We'll just call this mail merge. I'll open the Excel file and now we'll start putting some data in. So the first thing we're gonna build out is the columns, the last name, first name, the email, perhaps partner, and year started. The idea behind this, I just want to send out a mail merge that uh, to our employees that uh, congratulate them on the number of years they've been with the company and uh, hope that them and their partner uh, enjoy a gift certificate. So we'll use the data from this table to populate emails and send them out to the employees. So I'm going to select the first row and I'll format as a table. Choose whichever color you like. Today we'll go with green. And it asks, does my table have headers? Yes, it does. So we'll click OK. So now we have the table set up and ready to go. I'll start by putting in some fake names here. Now that I have some data inside my Excel file, I'm going to open up Power Automate. I'm going to create an instant cloud flow. I will name this one Mail Merge. We're going to make it a manually triggered flow. The first thing we will do is add a new step. We're going to search for list rows. And we're going to see list rows present in the table from Excel Online. So we'll click that. In location, find the SharePoint site that you're going to be getting that Excel file from. I'll choose the document library. Then the specific Excel file and then the table within that Excel file, which happens to be called table one, that I'm going to pull the data from. Let's click new step again. From control, let's choose apply to each. We are going to get the value of all the rows present in the table above, and it's going to apply that to each. For this first step, we'll just add a compose. That way we can just see what data is brought back to make sure it's working. So in the inputs, we'll see that it's pulling in the data. So I'm just going to put first name and last name. I'll hit save. And we'll just do a test to make sure it's pulling back values. We expect to see four of them because we have four people in our table. So I'll hit the run flow. And we'll see that it ran successfully. And we have exactly four items that went through. And it did indeed pull the first name and last name of all the people from my mail merge Excel file. Okay, so what we'll do now, I'll just delete the step. We're going to hit add an action. We're going to search for Outlook. We'll click on the Office 365 Outlook. Click on send an email. We will select the to field and add dynamic content. And we're going to choose email from the Excel file. In the subject, We'll put the first name with a comma. Please accept 
our our gift. In the body, I'm going to type out a message. Dear, we'll choose first name, put a space, last name. Actually, a bit too formal, we'll just go with the first name and then a comma. We would like to thank you for your X years of service with our company. Exclamation point. Please accept the attached coupon to the steakhouse as a token of our thanks. I hope you and, and we're going to choose partner, have a wonderful evening on us. Sincerely, the management. So let's give this a shot. I'm going to hit save. So let's hit test and see how this works. And it ran successfully. So let's just have a look here. So it did send it to the email address within the Excel file. It built out the subject with our dynamic data. And it filled in the partner. So we'll just go to the next one and have a look here. I did the same here as well. Christian, please accept our gift. Robert, accept our gift. And Thomas, accept our gift. And again, with the partner. So there's one extra little thing here that we can do. You did notice that I did put X years of service with the company. So what we're going to do here is add an extra step within here to calculate the number of years that the person has been with the company. So between the list rows present in the table and apply to each, I'm going to add a new step. And I'm going to search for date. And we're going to select the current time. Now, I don't want it to run the email again. I'm just going to add an action currently to stop it off, just to make sure. I'm going to put a terminate in here so that we can stop the flow before it goes through to that email. And I'll just hit save. So let's just do a quick test and see what comes back with current time. It did indeed bring back the current time, but not to my time zone. So let's add another step here. Under current time, and now I'm going to choose date again. We're going to select convert time zone. So what we could do is we can get the time that comes in from current time under base time. The source time zone is GMT or UTC. And we want to make it the local time zone that you're in. In my case, it happens to be UTC minus seven, Mountain Time US and Canada. And the string it's going to pull back, we can pull back whatever we like. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to go with a sortable date time pattern. And I'll hit save. So again, let's give this a test. I'll hit test. Run the flow. Let's have a look to see. So we go to convert time zone. You'll notice that it did bring it back at the exact time. It is indeed 22.52 right now where I'm at. So it's pulling in the correct time. What we want to do now is figure out the number of years that the person has been with the company. So before we do that, I really just, I ultimately just want to get the year out of this date. So I'm going to do a, do a compose action under add an action. I'll type compose. I do like to keep them organized. So I'm going to call this compose year. And what we'll do in the inputs is we're going to go to the expression. And we're going to go format date time and we're going to pull back the time from converted time 
We'll put a comma with a couple of single quotation marks and just pull back the year with four Y's. If you can see that, we'll click OK. Let's hit Save. Let's just give it a test again to make sure we're pulling back the correct year in the Compose Year function. And we'll see it did bring back the current year from the current time. Perfect. So what we need to do now is actually figure out the math. So underneath the send an email, we're going to add another action. We'll type compose. I can name this one compose year started, just to make sure it pulls back what it should. So there we go, we'll pull the year started from that. The next step, we'll do a compose again. We'll call this one Calc Years with Company. And with this, we'll select Expression. We'll find Subtract. And we're going to subtract. current year from the year they started and we'll go okay. Now let's drag this email below it. And where it says X, we'll just select that, select that, we'll go delete, and we're going to use the outputs of Compose Calc Years with Company. Perfect. So we'll hit save. I will give this a test. Looks like I forgot to delete the terminate. So I'm going to delete this terminate step. I'll hit test. We'll do a save and test. I'll try this again. So it looks like it failed. So we can't subtract numbers unless they're integers. So we're going to change that now. I'm going to go to compose year. Under format date time, let's select it. And in front of format date time, I'm just going to put an integer, int for integer, and I'm just going to close it off with another bracket. So what I'll do is I'll select the year started, I'll copy it, let's go to expressions, and we're going to go int of, and I'll paste in and get rid of the curly key braces in there. So let's try that again. So we've wrapped them both in integers. Now when you give it another test, it should be able to subtract those two numbers. Perfect, so let's have a look at this. So it calculated six years for the first one, eight years for the second, three for the third, And we can see in the email, it actually pulls it back. We would like to thank you for your three years of service. For Robert, we'll just go back. And eight years of service for Christian. Perfect. Let me crack open Outlook. And have a look. And there they are. Dear Tomas, we'd like to thank you for your 11 years of service with the company. Please accept the attached coupon to the steakhouse as a token of our thanks. I hope you and Brenda have a wonderful evening on us. And we'll have a look, and you can see that they all came through. Eight years of service for Christian, six years of service for Trinity. Thank you for joining me today on how to use Power Automate to perform an email merge using data from an Excel file, then automatically sending out emails using the Outlook Connector. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and leave your comments below. And please visit my channel again to see how did Jason do that. And until next time, keep experimenting with those Microsoft 365 offerings. Take care. Hey, thanks for watching my YouTube channel. Please check out some of my other videos.